All right, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning back in. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to replace your factory head unit with a aftermarket Android head unit. Uh, here in a second, I'm gonna show you what contents are inside those boxes. Then I'm gonna show you what tools are required for the installation. And then last but not least, I'm gonna show you from start to finish on how to properly install that in your vehicle. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, these are the two boxes that came for the radio. Uh, I'm gonna open up the bigger one first and then we're gonna get to the small one. Okay, contents inside this box, a massive wiring harness. Um, I am going to say this is the little annoying buzzer when you open up the door. Uh, I really haven't made my mind up yet if I'm gonna install it. Um, I guess we'll see uh, once I get to the installation. GPS antenna, uh, microphone. I will be using this even though uh, it did say that the radio has a built-in one. Uh, either way, I'm still going to use this one. That's nice, a little itty bitty Phillips screwdriver. Um, this is for the radio antenna adapter. Um, micro USB. Interesting. I'll find out uh, once it gets to the installation what this is for. Um, this looks a looks like for a reverse uh, camera or any type of camera. Um, but most likely the reverse uh, power wire right here. And then here is the RCA cable for that. So uh, as I get to the installation, I'll let you know what this is for. And then last but not least, uh, sweet, the trim. Okay, um, they come with two different trims. Uh, I went with the all black one. Uh, I think there's another one that's like Brush Luna or something like that. Okay, now we're going to open this box up since we know what's already in the big one. It should be very minimal in this one. I do like the packaging though. All right, so here's the actual radio. This little guy does have some weight to it. Um, yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, bigger than I expected or thought. Um, but yeah, I'm good with it. Uh, here are all the plugs, GPS, 4G, uh, your antenna. That's probably for the main harness. Um, but yeah, not a bad 10 inch. And then for the price as well. And again, I have a link uh, to the one I purchased down below in the comment section. And let me put this back in its sleeve and let's see what else is in here. Um, antenna or probably for the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna say this is probably for the Wi-Fi right here. Um, and another harness, why not push? Okay, you can put your SD card in here um, or your SIM card, should I say, uh, but I will not be doing that. Uh, I'll be running everything through my phone. Okay, all right, let's see what else is in here. Uh, some small screws, looks like that are gonna be the screws to install the actual LCD. Um, the actual radio to the uh, trim. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, and then a massive little guide on how to use this radio. What again, I, I said massive, but I bet you this is not even a quarter. Uh, there's many other things, uh, hidden features that you can get into these radios, but uh, that's, that's a video uh, for another time. But uh, yeah. So there you go, just showed you what's inside the big box, showed you what's inside the small box. Um, now let me show you what tools are required for this installation. And then let's get this little bad boy installed in the vehicle. Tools required for this installation are a few plastic pry tools, a seven millimeter socket, a T15 Torx bit, a small Phillips screwdriver, and then electrical or cloth electrical tape. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna have to remove is that plastic trim that goes around the radio. As you can see in the top right hand corner, there are 10 clips on this trim uh, that will give you a rough idea or a reference point on where you need to pry to take that off. Once you take that off, uh, there will be two harnesses on the bottom that you're going to have to unplug. Next, you're going to have to remove the four seven millimeter screws that are located in the corners just as shown in the top right hand corner in that still image. 
Next, you're gonna pull out the radio. Once you pulled it out, you're gonna unplug the three plugs behind the radio. Two go to the radio, and then one plug goes to the HVAC. Next, you're gonna to have to remove the lower glove box that is secured by four T15 screws, two on the top and two on the bottom, and they're pretty much located at the corners of the glove box itself. Next, you're gonna remove the harness from the HMI module. Once that's removed, then you're gonna take your OEM reverse camera retention harness, plug that in, and then run that through the dash where the radio will be sitting at. Next, you're gonna to have to remove two T15 screws from the knee bolster. Once you remove those, then all you're gonna to have to do on the top portion of the knee bolster, pull that towards you and you can remove it. Next, you're gonna to have to remove the tilt lever handle. All you're gonna to have to do is pull that towards you. Once you're done with that, then you're gonna take a pry tool and you're gonna work around the plastic trim to remove that from the shroud. Uh, now, some vehicles may have screws, some don't. Um, mine did not have these screws in there, so I'm, I'm guessing I'm missing those. But if you do have those, those will be a T15 uh, torque screw. Next, remove that harness. And once that harness was removed, you're going to grab your T harness, the one with the orange wires, uh, and connect that to the vehicle. Next, I just cleaned up the area a little bit and tucked the wires in as well as zip tied them to some of the OEM wires. Uh, once that was done, the two end wires, I ran them through the steering column uh, and then ran them all the way to where the radio would be installed. Once the T-harness is connected and the wires are ran, uh, you will reinstall everything back in reverse order. Okay, the next four items I'll be talking about is the GPS antenna, the Wi-Fi antenna, the extra USB cord, and then the Chime speaker. Now, I did not make a video on this, on how I installed them, due to the fact that I have seen many people put these in different locations. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you on where you want to put them at. Okay, the microphone, I installed that above the rear view mirror. Uh, once I placed it there with the double-sided tape, I then ran the wire in between the headliner and the roof. Um, it's gonna give you enough room uh, between those two just to kind of tuck in the wire. Um, once you run that all the way over to the A-pillar, um, what I did, I just uh, ran that wire straight down with the OEM wires and just zip tied that one wire with those. Uh, once I got done with that, I wrapped the wire around the tweeter uh, closest to the windshield and then from there all the way to the center of the dashboard. Uh, once I got to the center of the dashboard, that's where I then ran the wire straight to the center where I would be installing the radio. Next is the GPS antenna. I installed that on top of the plastic trim on the dashboard. Uh, once I installed that, I ran the wire around the vent um, all the way around back to the center. Uh, and then once I got back to the center of the dashboard, I ran it straight through the center where I would then uh, plug that in and install it into the radio. Next, I installed the Chime speaker in the exact same location where the CD player used to be at. Um, and then just ran the wire straight on the front because that's the exact same location where the radio is going to be at once you install it. Next, I installed the extra USB cord through one of those little holes or vents in the glove box, and then I reinstalled it in reverse order. Next, you're going to have to remove the climate control unit by prying back on those tabs and then pushing it towards you. Next, you're going to take the climate control unit and then snap that into place in the new trim. Now, before getting to the next step, just disregard all those wires because uh, they will be unplugged. Um, 
but for this you will take your LCD screen lay it face down then take the trim um, for this instance I had to run the wires to it but if you don't have the wires you just face it straight down um, and then you're going to have to lift it up and then screw the little Phillips screws uh, from the trim into the radio. Okay, so this is the last part of the installation. Uh, this is where I'm about to install or plug in all the wires that are needed uh, into this aftermarket radio. Now what I will do, I will time lapse this video not to bore you. Um, I'm not gonna talk about what I'm doing, but what I will do is put still images on the top left and right hand corners just to show you where I plugged in what. Okay, last couple steps here. Uh, you're gonna take all those loose wires and tuck them in nice and neat behind the radio. Once that is done, you're gonna take the radio and you're going to mount that back onto the dash uh, by using those four T15 uh, screws. And then lastly, you're gonna take the plastic trim, uh, secure both of those harnesses back into the trim, uh, and then also secure that as well onto the dash. All right, there we go, YouTube. That's it. Uh, just showed you what's inside both of those boxes. I showed you what tools are required for the installation. And then I showed you from start to finish on how to properly install this new Android head unit. Now, if you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. Also, if you have not done so yet, please subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications because I will be posting more content in the near future. On that, YouTube, that's it for now. Until next time, take it easy.